Hey, welcome to Fishy Business's Tank Tips number two of this year. As promised, we've made it to week number two, and here is the latest video. If you paid attention to the weekly update, you'll notice that I jokingly made a comment about all the ascent tanks that guy had ordered, two pallets worth to be exact. You can see them in almost every part of the store right now. So I thought it might make some sense to maybe do a display, a freshwater display, since last we did the BioCube and kind of give you guys an idea of why this tank is really cool. The purpose behind it for smaller fish, especially betas, in fact, we have nicknamed it the uh, Beta Mansion. This is the Aquian Ascent. It's basically a 20 gallon tank. The uniqueness of the Ascent design is in the top part where you can view it both head on and you can look at it from the top. One of the features upon taking it out of the box that I really like is this light little platform feet that it has that kind of props it up on the table, giving it kind of that modern feel were it to be a desk or a nightstand that you were putting it on. This back piece is really nice because it is already black. So it's neutralizing the whole box that we're gonna be putting the fish in. And it allows for the design in whatever type of design you choose to really pop and the fish as well. I always use a black background, sometimes a dark blue. I find that backgrounds with a lot of aquariums that are very busy, in freshwater especially, you lose the fish and you lose the design aspect that you yourself as the Aquarius can have so much fun doing. So, Aquion has taken that away from me completely as it's giving me the black background and so that's where we're gonna start. The top of the aquarium comes with a built-in light that's already set inside the top for a very sleek look so that when it's on, there's no light hanging on the top. There's nothing to get in the way of your vision of looking at the tank. You have all the three sides plus this fourth hidden side up top that really makes it really cool when you look down on it. You can kind of see it with a bird's eye view. So this is one of the things that you'll see as taking it out. Also the small filtration system. Now this is not a big tank and you can put in other types of filtration if you want to. This is just a very simple, what we would call a pony filter that actually sits inside the tank. Uh, it has several, it has two different chambers in here. So you can kind of fix it with whatever media you want. You are a little limited by the thickness of it, but as this has the black design, it is very well designed to go right here in the back corner and it blends into the background. So when you look at the tank, if you've ever heard me talk about designing tanks, it's to make it not look like an aquarium, but make it look like a piece of nature that's housed by an aquarium. This helps a lot with the sleekness of the design and what will happen next. So basically your Aquion Ascent comes with what I would say are three main components. The tank itself, the top that incorporates the lights, and the filter itself. The one thing that I would add to this would be a heater. I haven't brought one on display right now because there's lots of different choices for what you can use for a heater. And of course, if you're using, you know, if, you're, if you've got some small fish that don't necessarily need a heater or even maybe a goldfish or something like that, you don't absolutely have to have one. That is probably why it wasn't included in their package set. We're gonna set this up without a heater right now. Uh, for display purposes, but I do urge you in the in the future with whatever you decide Add a heater to it unless it's a goldfish. Okay, let's get on to the business of making it pretty We're gonna do this as a live planted tank. I'm gonna throw a few ideas at you Obviously, these are just my ideas in the moment. There are a thousand different ways you can set this tank up We're gonna do a very centrally focused design where we have just one main structure in the aquarium. We're gonna use the plants to accentuate it, and then hopefully the fish will take care of making the ascent a pretty tank. So here we go. So the most important piece of equipment, as we learned in the last video, is the wonderful towel. As water likes to take the path of least resistance, this will allow that resistance to not be your hardwood floors. So we will start with that. What I have chosen, as I said, is a sculptured piece of driftwood. Now, there are a lot of different ways you can do this. And depending on the type of environment that you're doing, whether it's gonna have plastic plants, whether it's gonna have live plants, whether it's gonna have a sand base, a gravel base, or a laterite base, I have chosen, because I've chosen to make it a live planted tank, 
I want to have something that replicates nature and has a, the most naturalistic look, which means that I'm going to use driftwood or I'm going to use rocks or something like that. No resin creations or anything like that. I happen to pick this one because I want it. A very central focus in the back where I'm almost creating a kind of a bridge like structure where there's two parts to the tank, the front and the back. This will help give it a little bit more of a three dimensional feel, I hope. And if you have multiple species of small fish, especially schooling fish, it kind of gives them something to run and play with. It also separates the top from the bottom so that if you had things like small hatchet fish, uh, or maybe a butterfly fish, something like that, they're gonna stay near the surface, which is wonderful because this is an ascent tank. You can actually see surface fish from the top, how they're really meant to be viewed through looking at the top. This is a really, really cool feature of this tank. Also, you're separating the bottom dwelling, maybe Corydoras catfish, Otisinclus, anything small like that, that has this space on the bottom. Now, with doing a natural planted tank, this tank is really going to show off two kinds of gravel really, really well. You could use a sand base, which would be really, really beautiful. It would draw your whole attention to the bottom. You would need to stay on top of it as far as keeping it clean, but it would really make the bottom pop. I've chosen to use Fluval Stratum Gravel. This gravel is really nice because it's a laterite-based gravel. It will feed plants for up to six months. It is a very similar color to the rest of the tank, and I want the focus in this tank to be the fish. So, unlike having put sand in there, I will have this. This will, this will neutralize the bottom in the same way that the dark or the black has neutralized the back, and it's going to shift all my focus right to the structure, which is what I want, the, the actual sculpture in the tank, and the plants that are going to be around them. Plus, as we have learned with our planted tanks here in the store, Green looks beautiful against black. It just does. So at this point, the gravel is kind of accentuating the front and the back. We've neutralized all of the tank pretty much but the sides, and we've drawn our attention to the center structure, which is exactly what I wanted to do. At this point, we now will add water. Two products that are ever so important for setting up any new aquarium, fresh water, for most communal type fish and things like that, is your alkaline regulator and your prime. We use these two products together. This makes the basis for any water we do, regardless of if you bought shrimp water or not. This helps to set the pH anyway, so that there's absolutely no confusion with anything, and the prime to relax the fish when they go in. I will actually use the bag that I used for the gravel to catch the impact of the water. You can use a plate, you can use a cup. I have found the Tupperware is great, anything like that, just so the impact of the water as you're putting it in doesn't disturb the gravel over much. So I will do something probably like this. Move this. Okay, so uh, water source. Water is the most important part of any aquarium. Why? Because it's what the fish live in. What I have to preach day in and day out is Water quality, water quality, water quality. 90% of fish diseases that people decide they are sick with this or sick with that have to do with poor water quality and not an actual disease at all. Doesn't discount the fact that fish get sick, but if you're using a good water source, it's, you're, you're hedging the bet in your favor that it's not going to be a problem. And what I've decided to do, especially because this is a live planted tank, especially because I haven't decided the species of fish going in, I may do shrimp, I may do crayfish, I may do something like that. Shrimp water is a great way to do that. The reason is, is because the KH and GH are already set. You're already typically in a planted tank, a live planted tank, which is what we, we know that we're doing. You want a KH of somewhere between five and eight. And this shrimp water is already bacteria fueled. It's already ready to go. Just like if you took good aquarium water and transferred it from one environment to another one. The cage is already set in between that five and eight, which is wonderful to start off with. Because usually if you tried to start with just regular tap water or spring water, you'd probably have a cage somewhere around zero. And then you're having to try to catch up to get to the plants. Whereas if you started off with a good water source, you're not going to have that problem. So shrimp water is what we're going to use in this display and for those reasons. So now let's fill up the tank.
Okay, so at this point we've filled the tank up. We're about 90% of the way full. I, sh I stop it short of here because at this point we're going to go into the plant decoration part of things. And I've gone on ahead and turned on my filter, which you can see right here. It's still a little bit out of the water, but that's okay. Right now we've done what we needed to do. Now this particular piece of driftwood wanted to float a little bit, so I took a piece of some slate rock to weigh it down a little bit, which is just a trick with driftwood. You can kind of bookend it with some pieces of rock if you get some driftwood that wants to float initially. You won't see that when I'm done because I'm gonna use plants in front of it anyway. And at some point in time, not that I need to, but I may choose to take that out completely. As you can also see, while it's not perfectly clear, that was a straight fill. So a little bit of sediment, of course, coming off of this laterite based gravel because it is dirt, essentially. This is a good tip to use the bag that you get your gravel or sand or, or laterite in just simply because with that impact of the water, you can see, you can actually see to decorate it. Were I to do it another way, I wouldn't be able to decorate it right away. It would take several hours for the filter to filter everything out. I've gone on ahead and turned the filter, so it will take some of the sediment out. And we'll actually go next door. We'll go to the live plants and we'll go shopping. So come with me. So where's the best place to start getting plants for your aquarium? It's your business. So that's why we're here in the main store and we're going to go through the plants. Now, there are lots of plants to do in a planted aquarium, and I'm going to do a separate video on the planted aquarium to come in the future. I'm not going to spend too much time on it because I want to keep this video for this particular thing short and sweet. So I'm going to go around and pick out a few things that I would like to do the initial decoration. It is by no means where it will stay because I will add and tweak other things along and along to make it both fun for myself and fun for the fish. So let's start with uh, picking out some plants. So I've chosen three distinct plants for the initial stage of the design. The first one is Anubius, which is probably the hardiest plant that we sell. It will go in the most different environments and can definitely handle the initial setup of an aquarium with the lack of nutrients in there to get you through the cycling period of the first four weeks. You will see in most stores when you buy Anubius, this is how it's packed. We urge you to take this out of its packing. You take it out of this pot. You pull all of this shipping mesh around it and you should be left with a very, very well developed root system on the plant and this is what we'll actually use to plant. The point where the root system meets the bottom of the, the actual stem of the plant is called the crown. You typically, when you're putting it into the gravel or you're putting it into whatever substrate you've chosen, you don't want to bury it above this crown level because that can kill the plant. You want to actually bury it just below the root system or right at the crown's point so that the roots, as they take root and actually grow through the gravel, pull the plant down. That's the natural process of things. Now, if you have a plant that doesn't have a very well-developed root system, plant weights are made, which we sell, that you can easily attach to the plant to weigh it down until that root system does get going. I also have chosen uh, Water Sprite and I've also chosen Java Fern both for its hardiness value, the water sprite for the, the, for the height, because I need that in the back to cover things up, and because I want your eye to see the whole aquarium. And I've done the java fern because of its hardiness, because of its look, it'll transition both of the two other plants that, I, that I've picked to kind of flow and have a nice central looking idea, and it will, I, they'll all complement each other in different ways. So. Let's actually get them in the tank and let's see how right I am. So this is a uh, quick overview of the Aquiana Scent Aquarium. This makes a beautiful little aquarium. The sleek look, the modern design, the aquarium not having the a light on top of it, it being built into the underneath, the viewability from the top and from the front and from the sides, I think makes it a very cool planet aquarium. You can do anything you want to with it and it could be used in a number of different ways. The only thing that I wish we were ready for were the fish. I think it's going to look even prettier when we, when we fill it with fish. 
However, I'd still like it to run for a good 24 to 48 hours just to make sure the water is properly oxygenated. That's kind of the fishy business rule of thumb, if you will, on setting up a new freshwater aquarium. But I think we've laid things out pretty much. There are a few other things I would probably do with some plants, but sometimes less is more and simple is better. And in this one design, we've created a way for fish to kind of swim through an overhang. Again, we've separated the environment for our top swimmers, our mid swimmers, and the bottom fish while we've, we've turned the wood slightly to create a little bit more of a 3D effect with a smaller aquarium. And we've set multiple viewpoints so that every part of the aquarium is interesting. And I think that's very important when you're setting up a design. Again, there's a thousand different ways to do designs with aquariums and we'll talk about those as we do different aquariums. Uh, hopefully this has given you a kind of a good overview of the Ascent, which is the newest aquarium we brought in at Fishy Business. I guess it's the first one of the new year. And whether you're freshwater or saltwater, this can still make an absolutely fantastic desktop aquarium, nightstand aquarium, and as a shrimp tank, especially having a place for them to kind of rest up top if they so choose would be really, really cool. So thanks for tuning in. Let us know how we're doing with these self-help videos and we'll try to get you a new one out next week. Have a great week.